The Etruscan civilization is the modern name given to a powerful and wealthy civilization of ancient Italy in the area corresponding roughly to Tuscany, south of the Arno River, western Umbria and northern and central Lazio. As distinguished by its unique language, this civilization endured from before the time of the earliest Etruscan inscriptions c. 700 BC until its assimilation into the Roman Republic, beginning in the late 4th century BC with the Roman Etruscan Wars. Culture that is identifiably Etruscan developed in Italy after about 900 BC, approximately with the Iron Age Villanovan culture, regarded as the oldest phase of Etruscan civilization. The latter gave way in the 7th century BC to a culture that was influenced by ancient Greek culture, during the Archaic Orientalizing period and the Hellenistic period. At its maximum extent, during the foundational period of Rome and the Roman Kingdom, Etruscan civilization flourished in three confederacies of cities, of Etruria Tuscany, Latium and Umbria, of the Po Valley with the Eastern Alps, and of Campania. The League in northern Italy is mentioned in Livy. The decline was gradual, but by 500 BC the political destiny of Italy had passed out of Etruscan hands. The last Etruscan cities were formally absorbed by Rome around 100 BC. Although the Etruscans developed a system of writing, the Etruscan language remains only partly understood, and only a handful of texts of any length survive, making modern understanding of their society and culture heavily dependent on much later and generally disapproving Roman and Greek sources. Politics was based on the small city and probably the family unit. In their heyday, the Etruscan elite grew very rich through trade with the Celtic world to the north and the Greeks to the south and filled their large family tombs with imported luxuries. Archaic Greece had a huge influence on their art and architecture, and Greek mythology was evidently very familiar to them. Topic. Legend and history Topic. Origins The Etruscans called themselves Rasenna, which was syncopated to Rasna or Rasna, while the ancient Romans referred to the Etruscans as the Tushi or Etruski singular Tuscus. Their Roman name is the origin of the terms Tuscany, which refers to their heartland, and Etruria, which can refer to their wider region. In Attic Greek, the Etruscans were known as Tyrrhenians, Tyrrhenoi Torinoi, earlier Tyrsinoi Tersinoi, from which the Romans derived the names Tyrrhenia, Tyrrhenia, Etruria, and Mare Tyrrhenum, Tyrrhenian Sea, prompting some to associate them with the Tyresh Sea peoples. The origins of the Etruscans are mostly lost in prehistory, although Greek historians as early as the 5th century BC repeatedly associated the Tyrrhenians Torinoi, Tyrrhenoi, Tersinoi, Tyrsinoi with Pelasgians, which could both be broad descriptive terms. Strabo and the Homeric hymn to Dionysus make mention of the Tyrrhenians as pirates. Thucydides, Herodotus and Strabo all denote Lemnos as settled by Pelasgians, whom Thucydides identifies as belonging to the Tyrrhenians. To de Pleiston Pelascacon ton kai lemnon pot kai Athenas Tyrsenon. Although both Strabo and Herodotus agree that Tyrrhenus, Tyrsinos, son of Atys, king of Lydia, led the migration, Strabo specifies that it was the Pelasgians of Lemnos and Imbros who followed Tyrrhenus to the Italian peninsula. A link between Lemnos and the Tyrrhenians was further manifested by the discovery of the Lemnos steel, whose inscriptions were written in a language which shows strong structural resemblances to the language of the Etruscans. This has led to the suggestion of a Tyrrhenian language group, comprising Etruscan, Lemnian, and the Raic spoken in the Alps. Hellanicus of Lesbos records a Pelasgian migration from Thessaly to the Italian peninsula, noting that the Pelasgi made themselves masters of some of the lands belonging to the Umbri. By contrast, Dionysus of Halicarnassus, a Greek writer living in Rome, dismisses many of the ancient theories of the other Greek historians and postulates that the Etruscans were indigenous people who had always lived in Etruria. For this reason, therefore, I am persuaded that the Pelasgians are a different people from the Tyrrhenians. And I do not believe, either, that the Tyrrhenians were a colony of the Lydians, for they do not use the same language as the latter, nor can it be alleged that, though they no longer speak a similar tongue, they still retain some other indications of their mother country. For they neither worship the same gods as the Lydians nor make use of similar laws or institutions, but in these very respects they differ more from the Lydians than from the Pelasgians. Indeed, those probably come nearest to the truth who declare that the nation migrated from nowhere else, but was native to the country, since it is found to be a very ancient nation and to agree with no other either in its language or in its manner of living. 
Furthermore, Dionysus of Halicarnassus is the first ancient writer who reports the endonym of the Etruscans, Ricenna. The Romans, however, give them other names, from the country they once inhabited, named Etruria, they call them Etruscans, and from their knowledge of the ceremonies relating to divine worship, in which they excel others, they now call them, rather inaccurately, Tushi, but formerly, with the same accuracy as the Greeks, they called them Thioskoi. Their own name for themselves, however, is the same as that of one of their leaders, Ricenna. Livy in his A Flat Urba Candida Libri says the Rhaetians were Etruscans driven into the mountains by the invading Gauls, and asserts that the inhabitants of Raetia were of Etruscan origin. The Alpine tribes have also, no doubt, the same origin of the Etruscans, especially the Rhaetians, who have been rendered so savage by the very nature of the country as to retain nothing of their ancient character save the sound of their speech, and even that is corrupted. Pliny the Elder also put the Etruscans in the context of the Raetian people to the north and wrote in his Natural History CE 79, Adjoining these the Alpine Noricans are the Rathi and Vindelici. All are divided into a number of states. The Rathi are believed to be people of Tuscan race driven out by the Gauls, their leader was named Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Genetic research Historians have no literature and no original Etruscan texts of religion or philosophy, therefore, much of what is known about this civilization derives from tomb findings. A mtDNA study in 2004 stated that the Etruscans had no significant heterogeneity, and that all mitochondrial lineages observed among the Etruscan samples appear typically European or West Asian, but only a few haplotypes were shared with modern populations. Allele sharing between the Etruscans and modern populations is highest among Germans, seven haplotypes in common; the Cornish, five haplotypes in common; the Turks, four haplotypes in common; and the Tuscans, two haplotypes in common. A mitochondrial DNA study, 2013, also suggests that the Etruscans were probably an indigenous population, showing that Etruscans appear to fall very close to a Neolithic population from Central Europe and to other Tuscan populations, strongly suggesting that the Etruscan civilization developed locally from the Villanovan culture, and that genetic links between Tuscany and Anatolia date back at least 5,000 years during the Neolithic. The ancient Etruscan samples had mitochondrial DNA haplogroups (mtDNA). JT, predominantly J, and U5, with a minority of mtDNA H1B. According to British archaeologist Phil Perkins, there are indications that the evidence of DNA can support the theory that Etruscan people are autochthonous in central Italy. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Expansion. Etruscan expansion was focused both to the north beyond the Apennine Mountains and into Campania. Some small towns in the 6th century BC disappeared during this time, ostensibly subsumed by greater, more powerful neighbors. However, it is certain that the political structure of the Etruscan culture was similar to, albeit more aristocratic than, Magna Graecia in the south. The mining and commerce of metal, especially copper and iron, led to an enrichment of the Etruscans and to the expansion of their influence in the Italian peninsula and the western Mediterranean Sea. Here, their interests collided with those of the Greeks, especially in the 6th century BC, when Phocians of Italy founded colonies along the coast of Sardinia, Spain and Corsica. This led the Etruscans to ally themselves with Carthage, whose interests also collided with the Greeks. Around 540 BC, the Battle of Alalia led to a new distribution of power in the western Mediterranean. Though the battle had no clear winner, Carthage managed to expand its sphere of influence at the expense of the Greeks, and Etruria saw itself relegated to the northern Tyrrhenian Sea with full ownership of Corsica. From the first half of the 5th century BC, the new political situation meant the beginning of the Etruscan decline after losing their southern provinces. In 480 BC, Etruria's ally Carthage was defeated by a coalition of Magna Graecia cities led by Syracuse, Sicily. A few years later, in 474 BC, Syracuse's tyrant Hiero defeated the Etruscans at the Battle of Cumae. Etruria's influence over the cities of Latium and Campania weakened, and the area was taken over by Romans and Samnites. In the 4th century BC, Etruria saw a Gallic invasion and its influence over the Po Valley and the Adriatic coast. Meanwhile, Rome had started annexing Etruscan cities. This led to the loss of the northern Etruscan provinces. During the Roman-Etruscan Wars, Etruria was conquered by Rome in the 3rd century BC. Etruscan League 
According to legend, there was a period between 600 BC and 500 BC in which an alliance was formed among twelve Etruscan settlements, known today as the Etruscan League, Etruscan Federation, or Dodecapolis in Greek Dodecapolis. The Etruscan League of Twelve Cities was founded by two Lydian noblemen, Tarshan and his brother Tarinus. Tarshan lent his name to the city of Tarchna, or Tarquini, as it was known by the Romans. Tarinus gave his name to the Tarinians, the alternative name for the Etruscans. Although there is no consensus on which cities were in the league, the following list may be close to the mark Aricium, Caesra, Clevson, Curtin, Perusna, Pupluna, Ve, Tarchna, Vetluna, Volterra, Velsna, and Velch. Some modern authors include Ruselli. The league was mostly an economic and religious league, or a loose confederation, similar to the Greek states. During the later imperial times, when Etruria was just one of many regions controlled by Rome, the number of cities in the league increased by three. This is noted on many later grave stones from the 2nd century BC onwards. According to Livy, the twelve city-states met once a year at the Phanum Voltumnae at Volsini, where a leader was chosen to represent the League. There were two other Etruscan leagues, Lega Dei Populi, that of Campania, the main city of which was Capua, and the Po Valley city-states in the north, which included Spina and Adria. Topic: <laughs> Possible founding of Rome. Those who subscribe to an Italian foundation of Rome followed by an Etruscan invasion typically speak of an Etruscan «influence» on Roman culture, that is, cultural objects which were adopted by Rome from neighbouring Etruria. The prevailing view is that Rome was founded by Italians who later merged with Etruscans. In this interpretation, Etruscan cultural objects are considered influences rather than part of a heritage. Rome was probably a small settlement until the arrival of the Etruscans, who constructed the first elements of its urban infrastructure such as the drainage system. The main criterion for deciding whether an object originated at Rome and travelled by influence to the Etruscans, or descended to the Romans from the Etruscans, is date. Many, if not most, of the Etruscan cities were older than Rome. If one finds that a given feature was there first, it cannot have originated at Rome. A second criterion is the opinion of the ancient sources. These would indicate that certain institutions and customs came directly from the Etruscans. Rome is located on the edge of what was Etruscan territory. When Etruscan settlements turned up south of the border, it was presumed that the Etruscans spread there after the foundation of Rome, but the settlements are now known to have preceded Rome. Etruscan settlements were frequently built on hills, the steeper the better, and surrounded by thick walls. According to Roman mythology, when Romulus and Remus founded Rome, they did so on the Palatine Hill according to Etruscan ritual, that is, they began with a pomerium or sacred ditch. Then, they proceeded to the walls. Romulus was required to kill Remus when the latter jumped over the wall, breaking its magic spell see also under Pons Sublicius. The name of Rome is attested in Etruscan in the form Ruma Chi meaning Roman, a form that mirrors other attested ethnonyms in that language with the same suffix Chi, Velsna Chi someone from Volsini and Sviama Chi someone from Savannah. This in itself, however, is not enough to prove Etruscan origin conclusively. If Tiberius is from Theta Afari, then Ruma would have been placed on the The Far Tiber River. A heavily discussed topic among scholars is who was the founding population of Rome. In 390 BC, the city of Rome was attacked by the Gauls, and as a result may have lost many, though not all, of its earlier records. Certainly, the history of Rome before that date is not as secure as it later becomes, but enough material remains to give a good picture of the development of the city and its institutions. Later history relates that some Etruscans lived in the Vicus Tuscus, the Etruscan Quarter and that there was an Etruscan line of kings albeit ones descended from a Greek, Demaratus of Corinth that succeeded kings of Latin and Sabine origin. Etruscophile historians would argue that this, together with evidence for institutions, religious elements and other cultural elements, proves that Rome was founded by Italics. The true picture is rather more complicated, not least because the Etruscan cities were separate entities which never came together to form a single Etruscan state. Furthermore, there were strong Latin and Italic elements to Roman culture, and later Romans proudly celebrated these multiple, multicultural influences on the city. Under Romulus and Numa Pompilius, the people were said to have been divided into thirty curiae and three tribes. Few Etruscan words entered Latin, but the names of at least two of the tribes, Ramnes and Luceras, seem to be Etruscan. 
The last kings may have borne the Etruscan title Lucumo. While the regalia were traditionally considered of Etruscan origin, the golden crown, the scepter, the toga palmata, a special robe, the sella curulis, curul chair, and above all the primary symbol of state power, the fasces. The latter was a bundle of whipping rods surrounding a double-bladed axe carried by the king's lictors. An example of the fasces are the remains of bronze rods and the axe from a tomb in Etruscan Vetalonia. This allowed archaeologists to identify the depiction of a fasces on the grave steel of Aval Fellusk, who is shown as a warrior wielding the fasces. The most telling Etruscan feature is the word populus, which appears as an Etruscan deity, Fuflans. Populus seems to mean the people assembled in a military body, rather than the general populace. <laughs> Society <laughs> Government. The historical Etruscans had achieved a state system of society, with remnants of the chiefdom and tribal forms. In this, they were different from the surrounding Italics, who had chiefs and tribes. Rome was in a sense the first Italic state, but it began as an Etruscan one. It is believed that the Etruscan government style changed from total monarchy to oligarchic republic as the Roman Republic in the 6th century BC, although it is important to note this did not happen to all the city-states. The government was viewed as being a central authority, ruling over all tribal and clan organizations. It retained the power of life and death, in fact, the gorgon, an ancient symbol of that power, appears as a motif in Etruscan decoration. The adherents to this state power were united by a common religion. Political unity in Etruscan society was the city-state, which was probably the referent of Methlem. District. Etruscan texts name quite a number of magistrates, without much of a hint as to their function, the Camthi, the Parnich, the Perth, the Tamara, the Maxtrav, and so on. The people were the Mech. The chief ruler of a Methlem was perhaps a Zalak. Family The princely tombs were not of individuals. The inscription evidence shows that families were interred there over long periods, marking the growth of the aristocratic family as a fixed institution, parallel to the gens at Rome and perhaps even its model. There is no sign of such a hereditary aristocracy in the preceding Villanovan culture. The Etruscans could have used any model of the Eastern Mediterranean. That the growth of this class is related to the new acquisition of wealth through trade is unquestioned. The wealthiest cities were located near the coast. At the center of the society was the married couple, Tusurther. The Etruscans were a monogamous society that emphasized pairing. Similarly, the behavior of some wealthy women is not uniquely Etruscan. The apparent promiscuous revelry has a spiritual explanation. Swaddling and Bonfante among others, explain that depictions of the nude embrace, or simplegma, had the power to ward off evil as did bearing the breast, which was adopted by Western culture as an apotropaic device, appearing finally on the figureheads of sailing ships as a nude female upper torso. It is also possible that Greek and Roman attitudes to the Etruscans were based on a misunderstanding of the place of women within their society. In both Greece and Republican Rome, respectable women were confined to the house and mixed-sex socializing did not occur. Thus, the freedom of women within Etruscan society could have been misunderstood as implying their sexual availability. It is worth noting that a number of Etruscan tombs carry funerary inscriptions in the form ex son of father and mother, indicating the importance of the mother's side of the family. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Military. The Etruscans, like the contemporary cultures of ancient Greece and ancient Rome, had a significant military tradition. In addition to marking the rank and power of certain individuals, warfare was a considerable economic advantage to Etruscan civilization. Like many ancient societies, the Etruscans conducted campaigns during summer months, raiding neighboring areas, attempting to gain territory and combating piracy as a means of acquiring valuable resources, such as land, prestige, goods, and slaves. It is likely that individuals taken in battle would be ransomed back to their families and clans at high cost. Prisoners could also potentially be sacrificed on tombs as an honor to fallen leaders of Etruscan society, not unlike the sacrifices made by Achilles for Patrocles. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cities. The range of Etruscan civilization is marked by its cities. 
They were entirely assimilated by Italic, Celtic, or Roman ethnic groups, but the names survive from inscriptions and their ruins are of aesthetic and historic interest in most of the cities of central Italy. Etruscan cities flourished over most of Italy during the Roman Iron Age, marking the farthest extent of Etruscan civilization. They were gradually assimilated first by Italics in the south, then by Celts in the north and finally in Etruria itself by the growing Roman Republic. That many Roman cities were formerly Etruscan was well known to all the Roman authors. Some cities were founded by Etruscans in prehistoric times, and bore entirely Etruscan names. Others were colonized by Etruscans who Etruscanized the name, usually Italic. Culture. Religion The Etruscan system of belief was an immanent polytheism, that is, all visible phenomena were considered to be a manifestation of divine power and that power was subdivided into deities that acted continually on the world of man and could be dissuaded or persuaded in favor of human affairs. How to understand the will of deities, and how to behave, had been revealed to the Etruscans by two initiators, Tagus, a childlike figure born from tilled land and immediately gifted with prescience, and Vigoya, a female figure. Their teachings were kept in a series of sacred books. Three layers of deities are evident in the extensive Etruscan art motifs. One appears to be divinities of an indigenous nature, Katha and Usil, the sun, Tivr, the moon, Selvins, a civil god, Turin, the goddess of love, Laron, the god of war, Lynth, the goddess of death, Maris, Thalna, Torms, and the ever-popular Fuflans, whose name is related in some way to the city of Populonia and the populace Romanus, possibly, the god of the people, ruling over this pantheon of lesser deities were higher ones that seem to reflect the Indo-European system, Tin or Tinia, the sky, Uni his wife, June Juno, and Cell, the earth goddess. In addition, some Greek and Roman gods were taken into the Etruscan system, Eridemi Artemis, Menarvie Minerva, Pacha Dionysus. The Greek heroes taken from Homer also appear extensively in art motifs. <laughs> <laughs> Architecture Relatively little is known about the architecture of the ancient Etruscans. They adapted the native Italic styles with influence from the external appearance of Greek architecture. In turn, ancient Roman architecture began with Etruscan styles, and then accepted still further Greek influence. Roman temples show many of the same differences in form to Greek ones that Etruscan temples do, but like the Greeks, use stone, in which they closely copy Greek conventions. The houses of the wealthy were evidently often large and comfortable, but the burial chambers of tombs, often filled with grave goods, are the nearest approach to them to survive. In the southern Etruscan area, tombs have large rock-cut chambers under a tumulus in large necropolis, and these, together with some city walls, are the only Etruscan constructions to survive. Etruscan architecture is not generally considered as part of the body of Greco-Roman classical architecture. Art and music Etruscan art was produced by the Etruscan civilization between the 9th and 2nd centuries BC. Particularly strong in this tradition were figurative sculpture in terracotta, particularly life size on sarcophagi or temples, wall painting, and metalworking, especially engraved bronze mirrors. Etruscan sculpture in cast bronze was famous and widely exported, but few large examples have survived the material was too valuable, and recycled later. In contrast to terracotta and bronze, there was apparently little Etruscan sculpture in stone, despite the Etruscans controlling fine sources of marble, including Carrara marble, which seems not to have been exploited until the Romans. Most surviving Etruscan art comes from tombs, including all the fresco wall paintings, which show scenes of feasting and some narrative mythological subjects. Buchero wares in black were the early and native styles of fine Etruscan pottery. There was also a tradition of elaborate Etruscan vase painting, which sprung from its Greek equivalent. The Etruscans were the main export market for Greek vases. Etruscan temples were heavily decorated with colorfully painted terracotta antifixes and other fittings, which survive in large numbers where the wooden superstructure has vanished. 
Etruscan art was strongly connected to religion, the afterlife was of major importance in Etruscan art, the Etruscan musical instruments seen in frescoes and bas-reliefs are different types of pipes, such as the plagiolos the pipes of pan or syrinx, the alabaster pipe and the famous double pipes, accompanied on percussion instruments such as the tintinabulum, tympanum and crotales, and later by stringed instruments like the lyre and kithara. Topic. Language and etymology Knowledge of the Etruscan language is still far from complete. The Etruscans are believed to have spoken a non Indo European language. The majority consensus is that Etruscan is related only to other members of what is called the Tyrsenian language family, which in itself is an isolate family, that is, unrelated directly to other known language groups. Since Rix 1998, it is widely accepted that the Tyrsenian family groups Raic and Lemnian are related to Etruscan. No etymology exists for Rasna, the Etruscans' name for themselves, although Italian historic linguist Massimo Pitto has proposed the meaning of shaved or beardless, backing the opinion of ancient figurines collector and author Paolo Campidori. The etymology of Tushi is based on a beneficiary phrase in the third Aguvine tablet, which is a major source for the Umbrian language. The phrase is Terskum. Nomen, the Tuscan name, from which a root asterisk tershi can be reconstructed. A metathesis and a word initial apenthesis produce e trus c. A common hypothesis is that asterisk ters along with Latin turus, tower, come from Greek tyrsis, tower. The tushi were therefore the people who build towers, or the tower builders. This venerable etymology is at least as old as Dionysus of Halicarnassus, who said, and there is no reason that the Greeks should not have called them by this name, both from their living in towers and from the name of one of their rulers." Giuliano and Larissa Bonfante, Bonfante 2002, speculate that Etruscan houses seemed like towers to the simple Latins. It is true that the Etruscans preferred to build hill towns on high precipices enhanced by walls. <laughs> Literature Etruscan texts, written in a space of seven centuries, use a form of the Greek alphabet due to close contact between the Etruscans and the Greek colonies at Pithecusae and Cumae in the 8th century BC until it was no longer used, at the beginning of the 1st century AD. Etruscan inscriptions disappeared from Chiusi, Perugia and Arezzo around this time. Only a few fragments survive, religious and especially funeral texts most of which are late from the 4th century BC. In addition to the original texts that have survived to this day, we have a large number of quotations and allusions from classical authors. In the 1st century BC, Diodorus Siculus wrote that literary culture was one of the great achievements of the Etruscans. Little is known of it and even what is known of their language is due to the repetition of the same few words in the many inscriptions found by way of the modern epitaphs contrasted in bilingual or trilingual texts with Latin and Punic. Out of the aforementioned genres, is just one such vorio cited in classical sources mentioned. With a few exceptions, such as the Liber Lintius, the only written records in the Etruscan language that remain are inscriptions, mainly funerary. The language is written in the Etruscan alphabet, a script related to the early Euboean Greek alphabet. Many thousand inscriptions in Etruscan are known, mostly epitaphs, and a few very short texts have survived, which are mainly religious. Etruscan imaginative literature is evidenced only in references by later Roman authors, but it is evident from their visual art that the Greek myths were well known. References Further reading Bonfante, Giuliano and Larissa Bonfante. The Etruscan Language, An Introduction. Manchester, Manchester University Press, 2002. Bonfante, Larissa. Out of Etruria, Etruscan Influence North and South. Oxford, B.A.R., 1981. Bonfante, Larissa. Etruscan Life and Afterlife, A Handbook of Etruscan Studies. Detroit, Wayne State University Press, 1986. Bonfante, Larissa. Etruscan Myths. London, British Museum Press, 2006. Haynes, Sybil. Etruscan Civilization, A Cultural History. Los Angeles, J. Paul Getty Museum, 2000. Izzet, Vidya. The Archaeology of Etruscan Society. New York, Cambridge University Press, 2007. 
Spivy, Nigel. Etruscan Art. New York, Thames and Hudson, 1997. Swaddling, Judith and Philip Perkins. Etruscan by Definition, The Culture, Regional, and Personal Identity of the Etruscans, Papers in Honor of Sybil Haynes. London, British Museum, 2009. Turfa, Jean McIntosh. The Etruscan World. London, Routledge, 2013. Topic. Cities and sites Soprintendenza per i beni archaeologici dell'Umbria. The Kai Kutu Etruscan Tomb. An undisturbed late Etruscan family tomb, reused between the 3rd and 1st century BC, reassembled in the National Archaeological Museum of Perugia. Etruscan splendors from Volterra in Tuscany. Hypogeum of the Volumnus Digital Media Archive Creative Commons licensed photos, laser scans, panoramas, data from a University of Ferrara, SciArc Research Partnership Topic. External links Etruscan Weapons and Warfare. Archived from the original on 30 January 2016. Retrieved 3 November 2017. Etruscan Lion Plaque Pendant. Archived from the original on 9 May 2017. Retrieved 2 February 2002.